there's so many highlights. I don't think I could say that there's one. But it, all the way through my career, I've worked with an awful lot of different animals, and they've all been incredible. It doesn't matter what they've been. It might have been an elephant, it might have been a gorilla, it might have been um, a small reptile. But the point is, you're working with an incredible amount of animals, and that's so, so important. And on the way, you meet a lot of interesting people. You work with a lot of interesting people. And if you network and get to know people elsewhere, you meet them too. And those are the highlights, and they, they go on and on. They don't stop. I've always been fascinated by animals and nature. As a young child well, growing up in South Wales, I was a very keen bird watcher and was out and about doing those kind of things. And there was a lot of opportunity to, to see the nature, really. Um, but I've always been interested in zoos and wanted to learn more. And my very first visit and a memory of a zoo and an animal in the zoo was going to Bristol Zoo when I was about four and a half, five years old to see a polar bear cub. Um, and that's always stuck in my mind and it made me want to do that. And all the way through, from about the, the age of five, four and a half, five, I wanted to work in a zoo and that's of course what I've done. And I've never regretted it for one second. Zoos have changed and they're changing rapidly and they have to evolve and there's nothing wrong with that. I've been, I worked for Bristol Zoo for 45 years and of course I've seen many, many changes. The thing that strikes me most in, in the more recent years, I think, is the, the pressures for finances and the need to be more commercial. And although I can understand why that has to happen or is happening, it still hurts. And I think sometimes zoos have gone a little bit too far onto the commercial side and they're losing their their vision and their understanding of what we're here for, which is for the animals. And the most important thing of all is for keepers to remain dedicated to their livestock. Th those animals rely on us all the time. And whatever happens, it's so important that keepers do not, never ever, let your animals down. You always have to be there for them. And that must never change. I think to begin with, in 1975 when I started, it was very much focusing on looking after the animals. Um, dealers were still involved then, animals would come in and out through, through uh, animal dealerships. And what's really changed is the way that zoos focus on conservation, uh, working together with species um, in managed programs really throughout the world, but also focusing a lot more now on in situ conservation and staff being involved in that. That's so very important. Cooperation is very important as well. Um, some of you may remember that I edited some guidelines, management guidelines, husbandry guidelines for, for cats and for bears and um, some other animals. Mustelids was another one. There were no guidelines in, in sort of the um, uh, 30 or so years ago and now of course there's guidelines all over the place, Outbark's involved with them uh, and so of course is Bayaza and Iyaza uh, and that's been a big change and cooperation, uh, working together, um, the Okapi programme that Bristol's been involved with uh, for many many years, initially it was just a small consortium of five zoos I think it was, now zoos work together not just with Okapi but with all sorts of species and the cooperation is much, much better. And I'm also really impressed by the way that keepers will share their information. I know that I can contact people and ask a question if I don't know the answer. And I'm here to answer those questions. And I've had people, I once had somebody ring me up from Moscow Zoo asking about how to handle a sloth and wanting some advice because they struggled. Or a conversation with a colleague in Edinburgh because there was a problem with a pygmy hippo calf. And this is what we do. We're all in this together as a family and the cooperation now is so much better. No, I don't have any regrets. I, I've, um, I, I've enjoyed every moment of it. Um, you learn as you go along, and there's things that you wouldn't do the same way a second time if that opportunity came along. Um, and you, you wonder sometimes about um, salary and, and progression and so on. I've worked very hard for Bristol Zoo. Bristol Zoo in return has given me a lot. So between us, I have no regrets really at all. Um, and I think it's important that yes you focus on your animals, yes you, you work very hard and if there's a sick animal in you, you're up all night with it or up all weekend with it or whatever, of course you do that. But there is another life out there and I have an amazingly strong and lovely family and that helps to keep me sane a little bit. Um, so no regrets, um, I've loved this job and I would, I would do it all over again for sure. Keepers understandably are very uh, almost possessive about their animals, they're very protective about their animals and I don't argue with that or disagree with that at all. 
But as you move up the ladder, you have to start thinking of other things. You have to start thinking about people if you're a manager. You have to start thinking about money, about budgets, um, the best way of transporting an animal from A to B, uh, costs involved, of course the welfare of the animal is important. So my message really is when you're dealing with the day-to-day -day stuff, think of the wider picture. Think about what your manager has to think about. Think about the media and if you have a press officer, what he or she has to deal with and be flexible. I've come across many keepers who at the very start of their career or early in their career almost label themselves, oh yes, I am the primate keeper, I'm the reptile keeper, whatever it is. And that's okay because you do need to have a core interest and you want to develop that knowledge. For me, it's mammals, always has been, always will be. But mindful of your career as you are developing and progressing, you have to have that uh, wider knowledge. Um, I worked in the reptile house in the aquarium at Bristol Zoo for, for three years and as I then became the, the, the senior curator and the head of the department, I had enough knowledge to be able to talk to my aquarium curator and know what I was talking about and understand what she, where she was coming from and to give support. And that applies for uh, bird cur curatorialship and, and reptiles and, and everything else. So it's important not to label yourself too quickly about being what you think is a specialist. And I've talked to keepers who've said, oh yes, I'm a specialist primate keeper, and then they've gone and worked with small mammals, and they've gone and worked with birds, and actually they've enjoyed that even more. So that's important. The other thing, or other things, networking. You member of ABWAC, use that facility. Go to workshops, go to the symposium, visit other zoos, make yourself known, write an article or two. They don't have to be uh, really deeply scientific, but if you've done some good breeding or you've got some good ideas for enrichment, whatever it might be, get them down, get them published. Have a bit of confidence in, in taking some photos and, and, and making those, um, those records. That's important and training is important. So if there are training opportunities within ABWAC, the, 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 the um, day or a couple of day meetings and so on, and also the, um, the Sparshot Diploma, the two year uh, Diploma in Animal Management, I think is a very valuable a uh, piece of uh, paper to have as, as a qualification. Apprenticeships are coming along now and that's a different ball game slightly and we'll see how that develops uh, as we go forward with that. But don't stop. Think about developing yourself, think about training, visit other zoos. It's not wrong to spend your holiday in the zoo or visiting zoos. You want to do other things as well but continue to widen your knowledge and uh, increase your skills and your networking abilities. I think the zoo industry as a whole is facing huge challenges for all sorts of reasons. Um, climate issues, plastic, um, environmental things, um, and having to, to uh, manage a, a strict budget to, to, to keep going. I'd like to see more emphasis on in situ cons conservation and I think zoos want to do that and they are improving. But um, the financial restrictions that they're all under to, to manage themselves as a, as a going concern um, creates restrictions in the way that they can do that and I think that is a bit of a concern. I'd also like to see a little bit more bite with uh, zoo legislation and zoo licensing and the inspections and so on. Um, I think particularly the local authorities are under a lot of pressure in terms of not having the resources and probably the skills to, to follow up what happens at a zoo inspection. Like the um, inspectors are fine and they know what they're talking about and they will make recommendations and conditions and so on and so on. Um, I've seen a couple of instances where for one reason or another the local authority hasn't been able to follow up on those, um, on, on that, uh, those conditions or recommendations and that's a weakness that I'd like to see uh, improved really. And I think it would, um, it's a very good inspection system and probably the best in Europe still, um, but I think it could be better. Thank you.